Hello, in this tutorial, we will be looking at Sage 200 and the rapid invoice entry screen available in the purchase ledger. This screen allows us to enter multiple purchase invoices in one go quickly and effectively. This option can be accessed in a number of ways. I'm currently in the supplier list and from the speed bar I can go straight into rapid invoice. Alternatively, from my menu on the left hand side I can go into purchase ledger, enter transactions and rapid invoice. Once I'm in the screen, I'm ready to go and I can start to enter my purchase invoices. The first question it will ask me is for the supplier account code. If I know it off my heart, I can type it in. Alternatively, I can type in the beginning of the code and tab and hopefully it will find it for me. If not, it will give me a reduced list to select from. Once the code's in, in the top left hand corner of my rapid invoice screen, it will give me the name of the supplier account so I can confirm that I've selected the correct account. Then it's going to ask me for the invoice date. This is the tax point date sent to you on the supplier invoice. So I'm just going to update that on this occasion. The reference will normally be the supplier invoice number, again available in the document that they've provided, so I'm just going to type that straight in. And then for me, the second reference is our internal filing number, so I'm going to enter that manually. The system's automatically pulled through a nominal code for me. That's been pulled through from the supplier account, and I can check that it's correct by looking in the top right-hand corner of my data entry screen, where it's going to give me the nominal name. Here I can see that it's for heat and light, and that's correct because this is my energy bill. So I can tap across to the narrative and enter a, a bit of information to try and make it a little bit easier to reconcile my accounts later. So this is going to be my um, energy bill, October 19. I then enter the net amount on the invoice, which for my example will be £500. And the tax code, that codes come through again automatically from the supplier account. But on this occasion, I want to override it. I don't want this invoice to be charged at 20% because the invoice that's been sent to me from the supplier is at a reduced rate of 5. So I can click on the drop down and I can pick my reduced rate BAT option. And when I tab through, you can see that the BAT's been updated. I'm then going to tab down to the second line in my grid and I can pick my second supplier who I've got an invoice for. And again I can update the date to be that on their invoice and then enter their invoice number. When it comes to the second reference which is my internal filing number I want to increment that number by one. I could type it in manually or alternatively I can press shift and F6 on my keyboard and that will automatically increment the number above by one. My nominal codes come through for me automatically and that's stationary and printing and I can then go through and type in some narrative. And an amount. On this invoice that the supplier's provided, they've given me the gross amount and not the net amount. So the gross amount may be for arch is is £100. They haven't given me the net amount to enter, but Sage 200 will do that maths for you automatically. If you press F9 on the keyboard at this point, then it will do a net, sorry, a gross to net calculation for you. And then I'm going to go down to row 3 for my purchase invoice entry. This time I've got an invoice from a supplier but I need to use two different nominal codes because they've supplied me both materials and labour and I analyse those out separately. So to do that I'm going to enter my first line and their invoice number and then again I'm going to use the shift and F6 to increment my filing number. So you can see that the nominal code that's come through is for materials, which is great. And there's a thousand pounds worth of general materials. But also in that invoice, I've got 500 pounds of labor. So I'm going to tab through to my fourth line. 
it's on the same invoice, so it's the same supplier. So if I press F6, it will copy the field above for me. It's the same invoice, so it's the same date. And it's the same invoice, so it's the same reference. So I'm just going to F6 all the way along until I get to my nominal code. What SAGE 200 does, as long as the supplier, the date, the reference, and the second reference are all the same, it will combine both of those lines to appear as one invoice on that supplier account for me. So what I'm going to do now is split out the nominal code. And here you can see that that's for labour. And I'm going to have £500 of labour. I have a fourth invoice come through from ABC Limited. Again, I'm incrementing my filing number. And that's going to be for £1,000. And there, all of my invoices entered now. I could go straight ahead and post those invoices to the purchase ledger, but before I do, I just want to quickly check to see if there are any duplicates already on the system. So at the bottom of the screen, I've got check for duplicates. I click on duplicates and no duplicates are found. So that's great. I can proceed now and post my invoices. And they've gone through and hit my supplier account and everything's up to date, updated instantly. So I can simply close out of the screen and all of my purchase invoices are entered. But a couple of other things that you might want to know first is we have got an option at the bottom which will hide and show additional columns in this grid. So I've taken out the due date and the exchange rate because my system's purely sterling. But if you did have foreign currency, then you can uncheck that box and then you'll get an additional column in the screen for your currencies. Or if you like to update or to modify or to review your due dates as you're entering your invoices, you can untick the due dates and you can have that additional column in here as well. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this video helpful.